This is the first video of year six of the restoration. Dave and Norman started riveting the underneath of the fuselage of KB976. Extrusions have arrived. These are the U-shaped channels which is part of a double-faced skin of the wing ribs. John's working on this one. Morning Keith. Alright now. Keith's also working on the assembly of the double skin wing ribs. When did these arrive then, the extrusions? Uh, oh, oh I, th I think uh, one of the lads went down and picked them up on Sunday. Oh, right. Put the extrusions up and had a load of other string of stuff that yeah. she's made. Are they for you as well, those stringers? Yeah, they're, they're a stringer for the, to repair the ones that are all broken. Oh, so that's good news then? Yeah. Cleats back from the painters. Five minutes at the front. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Six. Lancaster being prepared for engine tests after six months of taxiing, cleaning down so being able to check for fluid leaks. What's this for? It goes in the tail section. 
And what do they hold on the skin? That, that big box thing into the curve. Is it? Oh, I where they. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's still need putting together as well. They say that they're all cookies, aren't they? Yeah. That will. You have to heat the rivet up. To what yeah. temperature? It's five, five, five hundred degrees. Five, four, yeah. nine, five, five hundred degrees. Yeah. What's the melting point of them then? Oh, I don't know. But that, that just that just softens them. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you've got a couple of hours to work. Yeah. On. yeah. Or you can you can freeze them and get another couple of days out of it. Mm. It's a weird way of doing it. Yeah. Oh. And then they go down nice and soft, and then yeah. harden up in time. And but without, but without heating treating, we'd yeah. put them down. Yeah. Much, That's <laughs> going to be the same with rib twenty two. Probably. Um, I don't know where it is now, yeah. it's gone. Um, oh, that's what it was on the bench here, isn't it? Yeah, they said they had to cook the rivets, yeah, and yeah. that's what you mean that's by that, is it? Yeah. yeah. About 500 degrees centigrade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, these are the ones where you're going to have to cook the rivets in along here. Uh huh, looking forward to that. They're going to be hard rivets to put in. Are they? Why are you? They're just... Do you have to put them in while they're hot? No. Or... Yeah, you, you, you cook them. You're only... Then you quench them, and then you've got a certain length of time to uh, use them. Quenching them doesn't harden them, then it softens them, does it? it well, it just keeps them soft, yeah. 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 And then you have, I can't remember, it's a couple of hours to use them, and then they go yeah. up. But you can freeze them, and then you, you get a bit yeah. more time. So, yeah, you're, you're not handling them hot like no, they do no. in the, the boiler shops. No, no, they're doing you mean, yeah, in the shipbuilding stuff. Yeah, like that, and, yeah, the, yeah. and it, it's, it's sort of contracts. the same idea. Yeah. It's sort of the same idea. You're heating your rivet up yeah. to soften it yeah. so you can form it and then it'll work hard and itself yeah. back up again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, will you use a round head or will you use a cheese head? At the... um, I don't know what was fitted. <laughs> Look at that. I'm, I'm guessing they're all um, the mush heads. Yeah. Mushhead, yeah. Well, it might be snaphead. Yeah, no, that mushhead. Yeah. What about the underneath? Will they just be kind That's, of a flat? Uh, no, because I don't think. Again, I'd have to look on the other one. Oh, really? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. They just sat like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the tail leg comes through here. Yeah. So that's why these ones are kind of sunk. Yeah. So that area is kind of sunk, but the rest of them will be just normal um, reaction. Uh, the beefy piece of kit. Yeah. yeah. That's going in next, is it? Let's... Well, let's try and see if we can get him by the end, end of this week or next week. Yeah. When's the painter coming in to do it? Uh, we don't know yet. I oh. thought it was going to come in this weekend, but. Uh... In the afternoon, they took the Lancaster and the Mosquito down to the concrete pad. Sticky was in charge of the engine test. I spoke to him before the test but did not record what he had to say. A few days later I asked Sticky if he would explain again what he had told me before the engine test. So oh, Sticky, you know when, you, mind if I record this, and last, last week you're doing engine tests on the Thursday, yeah. and you're talking to me about the cylinders glazing over, and you uh, have to test. Yeah, the the, um, the thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what causes the glazing? Um, it's basically running um, at too low a speed and not enough sort of like um, on the engine in. in Sort of like getting the supercharger to work and putting pressure into the engine to force the rings out. Um, if it doesn't scrape, basically, they scrape the uh, scrape the bores. Um, if they don't scrape the bores, um, then you get like a glaze that comes on them, uh, yeah. and it's just the heat and the you know and it, when the temperature and the oil and stuff. Um, so the idea is to pressure in the engine by running the engine up with. Um, positive boost um, and then just sort of like loading the prop up, running the, the prop RPM down um, and putting the force in there which spreads the rings out 
um, and then scrapes the bores, as it were, to, to get this glazing off. Because um, with that glazing off, it makes a, the bores very, very smooth to the point where um, the oil will escape past it, past the rings, and then you see a slight um, blue mist coming out the exhaust stops. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so we try to sort of like limit the low RPM side of it as uh, little as possible, really. So what you did last Thursday then was to cut the engines up to an eye rate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take put, it up and to, put a load on it. Yeah, something like, um, take it up to around 2,300 RPM and then bring the RPM down with the prop lead down to about 2,000 and then um, run it in that positive boost. Um, for maybe a minute, because um, obviously you've not got much airflow uh, into the radiator so it can get very warm very quickly. a little bit and a little bit is better than yeah because um, I do spend a lot of time below 2000 rpm um, and a lot of idling and taxing um, so every now and again we give them a bit of proper exercise you know and also it, it, it tests out the, the CSU to make sure the CSU is working because um, it should control the rpm and See the boost should working, control as though. well um, when you've got it into where the, the CSU is working, 1800 RPM foot, yeah. um, it's sort of like when you bring the prop RPM down with the prop lever, um, where you set it is where it should stay. So if you open the throttle, um, the RPM may creep up a little bit, but then it should come back down again and it will stay there at 2000 RPM. Yeah. Um, the same as when you close the throttle a little bit, so you're reducing the boost. The RPM may come down a little bit, but then it will rise back up again to around the 2000 mark, yeah. which is then we call it constant speeding and constant boosting. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if you move the, the propeller RPM up and down with the prop lever, um, the boost should stay the same, um, which is where you've set the throttle. Yeah. Um, so once you get into the CSU area, when you open and close the throttle, um, you can get to a point where you get to maximum RPMs, although we don't run them on maximum RPMs, um, where the, the RPM is at maximum, but the boost isn't at maximum. So when you open the throttle further, it actually puts more boost on. Um, but we only run them up to like 22, 2300 RPMs, um, so which is where we bring the RPM down and then exercise the engine, if you like. Yeah. So that's what you were doing last Thursday. Did you get any leaks or anything through doing that eye, eye red? Uh, you shouldn't do, no. no. No, you shouldn't do. We have got a, a leak out the, um, the prop dome on this side. Yeah. Um, so that was another check, is getting the, the warm oil or the hot oil through to the dome. Um, because obviously it's thinner. Uh, we're more likely to find leaks that way. Um, and when we shut down, we had a splatter of oil on the blade and you can see it sort of um, tracing back from the dome plug um, back from yeah. oh, cool. you know you've got to keep your, your eye on the job yeah. because, uh, if all of a sudden the oil pressure drops down or something yeah. then you, know, you need to shut the engine down yeah. uh, pretty sharp or something you know anything yeah. can happen right yeah right that was good thank you that's all right thank yeah. you very much yeah